Hi, my name is Jeff Gensler, and thank you for joining me for the presentation on the Stonely Avenue, Drewville Road intersection improvements project. I am with GPI, I'm the project engineer, so uh, let's get started. I can tell you about what we've been working on. So for today's agenda, I'm going to be touching back on the background of the project and some of the existing conditions of the intersection. I'm going to review the design objectives and the funding that is being used to pay for the project. I'm going to go through the project schedule and what lies ahead. I'm going to show you three design alternatives that were evaluated and discounted by the uh, county. I'm then going to get into the county's preferred alternative. I'm going to touch on some of the details, including the drainage and stormwater treatment, the roadway geometry improvements, and works on traffic control. Lastly, we'll do a recap of the project. I just want to tell you that um, if you would like to provide written comments, um, there's one of two ways you can do it. First, you can go on the county's website and put a comment in there. Secondly, is you can email uh, Zen Wojcik of Putnam County directly at the email address below. All um, comments received by July 1st will um, be issued a written response to comments at a later time. So for the project team, uh, first from uh, the Department of Transportation, we have Steve McCavery. He is a local project liaison um, from Putnam County. You have Commissioner Fred Penna, uh, Deputy Commissioner John Tully, and uh, Zen Wojcik. Uh, Zen Wojcik is the uh, point man for the project in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. From design consultants, you have Greenman Peterson. Uh, project manager is Chris Cornwell. You have myself, uh, project engineer. And then from environmental design and research, you have Andy Mavian, who is handling the environmental permitting. He is in charge of the cultural resource coordination for the project. And lastly, you have Tom Height from RK Height, who is in charge of the right-of-way acquisition for the project. Well, so some background on the project. Stonely Avenue was originally identified as a roadway in need of improvements back in the 2000s. Um, the, a project was pursued and in 2009, several alternatives were um, developed that included the widening of travel lanes and shoulders. Um, originally, the scope for the project included going from the Putnam Hospital Center all the way up to Route 6. Uh, the project was never pursued, um, mainly due to um, higher than expected costs. Currently, on an average weekday, Stonely Avenue carries uh, 10,700 vehicles, whereas uh, Drewville Road handles about 5,700 vehicles. Uh, the project is located within a New York City watershed. Uh, for this, it requires post stormwater controls as well as the uh, preparation of a stormwater pollution prevention plan. The project area. Uh, seen here is the intersection. As you can see, it's a very tight intersection in the uh, northwest quadrant and northeast quadrant are uh, New York City DEP properties. In the southwest quadrant is a commercial building and in the southeast quadrant is the um, a condominium development. So the project area is uh, quite difficult and um, to work with. And part of the um, geometric challenges that we are trying to face is what you can see here. Um, the western approach of Drewville Road intersects Stonely Avenue at a 54 degree skew. This in combination with the uh, vertical curvature of Drewville Road leads to very poor sight distance for drivers as they uh, both approach the intersection as well as when they are sitting at the intersection looking to the left and right. Um, as you can see from these two photos, uh, it gives you a kind of perspective of what a driver sees as they are coming into this intersection. Another issue with the project area is the existing drainage or lack thereof. Uh, the intersection was not constructed with any drainage in mind. And so as it stands now, water flows freely along the edges of the roadway, which is leading to the erosion of both 
the shoulder as well as the asphalt you see in these two photos. Additionally, the runoff is not treated before it enters the adjacent Croton Falls Reservoir. So when this project started last summer, we established six design objectives that we wanted to achieve. First and foremost, we wanted to improve the overall traffic conditions at the intersection. This would not only help um, the traveling public, but it also improves access to the Pot Putnam Hospital Center. Sec um, actually third, we would wanted to mitigate the skew of the intersection and the lack of sight distance for drivers, both approaching and waiting at the intersection. We wanted to also evaluate uh, accidents in the area to see if there's any leading um, causes that could then be mitigated through our design. Uh, we wanted to construct a stormwater treatment system and install a new drainage system. Uh, lastly, we need to, uh, depending on the design, install new guide rail and signing as required. The funding sources for this project are both federal. First is the Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality, known as CMAC, and secondly is the Surface Transportation Program. The total budget for the project is $4.9 million. So this is the project schedule. We are currently in what's called preliminary design. We started that this last summer and should be wrapping up this summer. In that, we uh, vet the project alternatives. We establish the different impacts of the project, such as uh, impacts to wetlands and cultural resources. We start the uh, right-of-way process with the initial outreach that RK Height does. Uh, part of it is the public information presentation that we're doing now. Uh, we should be wrapping that up this summer which means this fall uh, we'll be starting what's called final design. In that we will be doing uh, start permit applications. We will take the plans up to a higher uh, degree of detail and we'll continue on with the uh, right away acquisition process. Final design should get wrapped up um, in the spring or summer of next year. Um, and once right away is done, once permits are in hand and the plans are stamped, we can then go to DOT and if they authorize it, we can advertise a project which should, should occur in the fall of 2021. If it, once it's let, the project will then be able to start construction in probably late winter or early spring of 2022 with construction wrapping up in the summer fall of 2022. So the three alternatives that were uh, discounted by the county, uh, first is the null alternative or do nothing alternative. This was um, not considered as it doesn't take advantage of the funding for the project or achieve any objectives. Second was the uh, replacement of the traffic signal alone. This would improve performance at the intersection and reduce queuing and delays, but it doesn't meet all the project objectives. Uh, the estimated cost for this would be about $250,000. Alternative number three is constructing a new four-way intersection. Uh, it would construct additional turning lanes as necessary. It would uh, construct both a closed drainage and stormwater treatment system. There would be uh, geometric improvements to the intersection to uh, address the horizontal and vertical curvature of the roadways. Um, estimated cost on this is about 2.7 million. Um, the schematic of what it would look like is shown here with uh, putting in turn lanes on the northbound, um, westbound and eastbound approaches. And then on the north side, we would have a slip ramp. Ultimately, the county chose not to pursue this. So, and instead, um, decided to go with alternative number four, also known as the preferred alternative, which is this single lane roundabout concept that was developed. Now, now let me get into some of the details of this one. So, so the single lane roundabout has a 130 foot inscribed circle. Uh, this is large enough to accommodate a WB67 tractor trailer. This tractor trailer, um, is what you'd see on the highway. So certainly if it can handle a tractor trailer, it's capable of handling a school bus or other commercial vehicles. 
Additionally, it will um, the roundabout will, will reduce entry speeds, which should have a benefit to accident reduction. One of the um, reasons the county really likes the roundabout is it eliminates the traffic signal. Um, traffic signals are subject to power outages, which given its proximity to the hospital is a major concern. It also um, el eliminates uh, the need for annual maintenance and cost to the county. Uh, roundabouts are also known to uh, re lead to reduced emissions as they eliminate idling vehicles that are common with uh, conventional signalized intersections. Similar to alternative three, uh, this will construct both a closed drainage system and new stormwater treatment system. It'll also improve uh, the horizontal and vertical curvature of the roadway to improve uh, site distance. Estimated cost on this is about 2.92 million. So I'm gonna to touch on now uh, the drainage and stormwater design that we looked at for this project. On the drainage side, uh, we are, we'll be putting in a series of catch basins throughout the uh, project approaches as well as the uh, roundabout. Uh, what we are gonna do is curb the approaches as well as the roundabout center, which will guide the, the stormwater into these basins. The basins then will empty into a series of stormwater uh, designs. Now, the other part of the drainage that we're improving is there's a culvert beneath Drewville Road that will be replaced as part of it. Um, so now to address stormwater, what we are doing is in the northeast corner, we are constructing a new uh, detention pond here. Um, due to the impacts of the roundabout, the existing detention pond that serves the condominiums here is going to be uh, modified or expanded because we actually impact it right here as constructing the roadway. Uh, on the western approach of Drewville Road, we are going to be putting in two hydrodynamic separators, which remove solids from the runoff prior to them being um, emptied into the adjacent area here. Anywhere you see uh, what is currently asphalt, um, that won't be part of the future roadway will be removed and turned into green space. So that reduces our impervious area. Uh, shown in the upper left-hand corner are a couple of typical sections. Uh, the lower one is the common typical section that you'd see on say Stonely Avenue here, where we have 11 foot travel lanes and two foot shoulders. Then that is backed up by curb and guide rail as needed. In on this upper one, we have what's called a, a gris wall. It's a geosynthetic reinforced stabilized soil wall. Um, that gris wall is will be constructed along this area of Drewville Road, and a uh, block style retaining wall will be constructed along this side. And the reason we need this is we are actually going to be raising up the profile of the roadway in this area to, to increase sight distance for drivers. So here's a pro, um, project profile of Drewville Road. Um, there's two, uh, two lines you see here. The solid line is the proposed roadway, the dash being the existing roadway. So this begins down here um, west of Stonely Avenue so we travel down and right about at the bottom of the sag of the uh, roadway, we start raising up, um, raising up Drewville Road. And that can, um, stays about the same at an 8% um, design grade. And what this allows us to do by over steeping away from the intersection is when we get closer to the roundabout, which is seen here, we're able to transition to it at a much flatter um, rate of change, so about 2%. This increases the sight distance for drivers out to a larger uh, width through the roundabout. Um, if you look in comparison, you could see here is our existing uh, roadway, and you can see how Drewville Road comes up, goes, and then just dot, um, increases sharply into the roundabout. That's why you can't see 
um, your sight distance through the intersection. Now, continuing forward with the design, uh, we, we exit the roundabout and drop down. This is the eastern approach. We drop down at a 7% grade, design grade, and then rejoin the roadway. On this side is where we will just do a series of cut and fills to construct it. It is on this side where we need that grist wall and the retaining wall. Uh, the height difference in some of these areas can be as much as 10 to 12 feet. To make this uh, work and improve site distance as well, we are proposing uh, doing a cut on Stonely Avenue. This is um, south of Drewville Road. And what we do is we transition um, into the roundabout. And before we do, we are doing a three to four foot cut and this helps allow the transition from Drewville into that um, intersection. So it gets cut down through here. We tr um, come flat, roughly flat through the roundabout and then exit out um, pretty much as it is now on the Stonely Avenue. Now you're probably wondering how we're gonna construct all this. Uh, and that is something that we have talked about and will continue to talk about through detailed design. The work zone traffic control is going to be phased. Um, the first phase will be in late winter or early spring of 2022. And as part of this, we um, first will be doing coming in and doing the tree clearing. We are going to construct the eastern approach here. We'll construct a pump station driveway here and we'll do some limited drainage and utility installations. The second phase is much more substantial. Uh, the proposed solution is to close the western approach to Drewville Road here. Uh, this will allow the contractor to build both the retaining wall and the grist wall and construct all the um, closed drainage system necessary. Trying to build these three things without the roadway being closed would be very, very difficult. And this will, what we're going to do is bypass Stonely Avenue, as you can see through here. This will allow the contractor to build the remainder of the roundabout center as the roadway is closed. Uh, during this time, Stonely Avenue will operate under a free flow condition while Drewville Road will operate under a stop sign control. Part of the uh, closure of this uh, approach will be uh, reaching out to emergency services well ahead of time to get to coordinate this effort. Uh, phase three of the project will be uh, doing constructing detention ponds, doing some final landscaping restoration and the final paving. Uh, any paving that you see in the hatched areas will simply be done under alternating one-way traffic. The remainder of the work should be able to be done off the roadway, which would, won't in, impact the traveling public. Now for a project recap. Again, we are in preliminary design. So some of the concepts that you've seen here, we are still uh, working through the design details and we will continue so until next summer at which time we're hoping to have everything wrapped up with right away permitting and design. At that time, we'll then uh, move into the um, bidding process and hopefully, as we said, construction should begin in late winter or spring of 2022 and wrap up in the summer, fall of 2022. Uh, again, I encourage you to uh, write in um, comments, questions. Uh, they, they can be written into the county's website or email to Zen Wojcik um, directly at the address below. Comments uh, submitted by July 1st will receive a formal response to comments um, after um, the comment period had closed. Again, um, Jeff Gensler, and thank you for joining me for this presentation.